The world changed faster than any of us could have imagined. One day, we were marveling at the latest smartphone. The next, artificial intelligence was revolutionizing every aspect of our lives. As a covert military operative, I've seen firsthand how this rapid progress birthed a new era of technological marvels and unprecedented dangers. My name is Marcus Blackwood, though most know me by my call sign, Sentinel. I lead the Ares team, an advanced recon and extraction squad working for the Umbral Group under the Eclipse Initiative. We're the ghosts in the shadows, cleaning up messes that officially don't exist. The rise of AI didn't just accelerate technological progress. It gave birth to megacorporations that grew more powerful than some nations. The Umbral Group was one such entity, its tendrils reaching into every corner of the globe. On the surface, they were pioneers in medical research and cutting-edge tech. But beneath that polished exterior lurked a darkness I've come to know all too well. They played with fire, developing weapons that could reshape the world, or end it. Our team was assembled for the dirtiest, most dangerous jobs imaginable. Each member of Ares is a specialist, the best at what they do. There's Sergeant Sebastian Reeves, callsign Raptor, my second in command a battle-hardened vet with predatory instincts that have saved our hides more times than I can count. Corporal Sofia Martinez, Aegis, our medic. She's got steady hands and a calm demeanor that's worth its weight in gold when things go sideways. Then there's Corporal Ethan Frost, Hawkeye. Give that man a rifle, and he'll put a bullet through a gnat's ass at a thousand yards. The wild card of our group is Corporal Leo Parker, better known as Jester, He's our demolitions expert, with a mischievous streak that keeps us on our toes. Rounding out the team are our newest additions. Private Viktor Petrov, Cipher, a code-breaking prodigy who can crack systems most people don't even know exist, and Private Zoe Harper, callsign Tempest. Don't let her size fool you. In close quarters combat, she's a force of nature. Our latest mission brought us to the Catskill Mountains, to a place called Stonebridge College. On paper, it was just another liberal arts school nestled in picturesque wilderness. In reality, it was a front for one of the Umbral Group's most secretive research facilities. The campus, built against a mountain face, hid a warren of underground labs where the company's brightest minds worked on projects that would make your skin crawl. I remember standing on a ridge overlooking the college, the autumn air crisp in my lungs. The campus looked peaceful, students milling about between classes, completely unaware of the Pandora's box lurking beneath their feet. In those labs, umbral scientists had been developing something called the Havoc Virus, a biological weapon with the potential to rewrite the rules of warfare. But like so many of humanity's worst creations, it had slipped its leash. Our intel came from Frank the local police captain with a taste for fine scotch and finer paychecks. He'd been on Umbral's payroll for years, keeping curious locals and nosy reporters away from Stonebridge's secrets. But even he couldn't cover up what was happening now. The virus had leaked, and it was spreading fast. As I briefed the team on our mission parameters, I could see the weight of what we were about to do settling on their shoulders. Our job wasn't to save lives or contain the outbreak. No, we were there to erase every trace of Umbral's involvement. To make sure that when the dust settled, there'd be nothing left to implicate the company in the horror unfolding before us. I watched as each member of Ares prepared for the mission in their own way. Raptor checked and rechecked his gear, his eyes gleaming with a predatory focus. Aegis closed her eyes, taking slow, measured breaths, her way of centering herself before the storm. Hawkeye was already scanning the campus through his scope, mapping out vantage points and lines of sight. Jester cracked jokes as he loaded his pack with enough explosives to level a city block, while Cipher's fingers danced over his tablet, hacking into the college's systems. Tempest shadowboxed, her compact frame coiled like a spring ready to unleash. As for me, I felt the familiar calm settle over me. Years of missions like this had taught me to compartmentalize, to push aside the questions of right and wrong, and focus on the task at hand. But as I looked down at Stonebridge College, 
at the students and faculty going about their day, blissfully unaware of the nightmare about to engulf them, I couldn't shake a gnawing feeling in my gut. This mission was different. This time, the cost of our success would be measured in innocent lives. The sun was setting behind the mountains, casting long shadows across the campus. In a few hours, darkness would fall, and with it, our operation would begin. I gave the order to move out, and Ares melted into the gathering dusk. As we made our way towards the maintenance tunnel that would be our entry point, I silently hoped that the pregnant professor I'd spotted through my binoculars earlier had decided to call it an early day and head home. But deep down, I knew that in the coming hours, Stonebridge College would become a graveyard, and we would be its silent undertakers. The maintenance tunnel loomed before us, a gaping maw in the mountainside that seemed to swallow what little light remained. As we approached, I could feel the tension radiating from my team. We'd been in tight spots before, but this, this was different. The Havoc virus wasn't just another weapon. It was a force of nature, unpredictable and merciless. I gave the signal, and we moved into the tunnel in perfect formation, our night vision goggles painting the world in shades of green. The air grew thick and stale as we delved deeper. The only sounds are measured breathing and the soft crunch of our boots on the rocky floor. Siffer worked his magic on the security systems, looping camera feeds and disabling alarms. In the eerie silence, I could almost pretend this was just another routine infiltration. That illusion shattered the moment we emerged into the basement of the main campus building. The stench hit us first, a sickly sweet odor of decay that clung to the back of our throats. Then came the sounds, ragged breathing, inhuman groans, and the occasional crash of furniture being overturned. I signaled for the team to hold position as I peered around a corner. What I saw will haunt me until the day I die. A group of students, or what used to be students, shuffled aimlessly through the hallway. Their skin was mottled and blistered, eyes clouded over with a milky film. One of them, a young man whose letterman jacket hung in tatters from his frame, suddenly jerked his head in our direction. I held my breath, praying our sense suppressants would hold. After what felt like an eternity, the infected moved on. I turned to my team, seeing my own shock and revulsion mirrored in their eyes. Remember the mission. I whispered, my voice sounding hollow even to my own ears. We're here to contain and destroy evidence. Engage only if absolutely necessary. We made our way through the building, encountering more scenes of horror with each turn. Classrooms that had become charnel houses, laboratories where the virus had clearly been weaponized. Through it all, Hawkeye's calm voice came through our comms, guiding us past the largest concentrations of infected from his perch in the clock tower. It was in the student union that we found our first survivors. A pregnant professor and a terrified student had barricaded themselves in a storage closet. When we breached the door, the student nearly took Tempest's head off with a makeshift club before realizing we weren't infected. The professor, her hand protectively cradling her swollen belly, looked at us with a mixture of hope and suspicion. Who are you? She demanded, her voice hoarse from dehydration. Are you here to help? I felt the weight of my team's eyes on me as I struggled with the decision. Our orders were clear. No witnesses, no loose ends. But staring into the eyes of that unborn child, I couldn't bring myself to give the order. We're getting you out of here, I said, ignoring Raptor's sharp intake of breath behind me. But you need to do exactly as we say, understand. As we escorted the survivors to a secure location, ages tending to their immediate medical needs, Siffer's voice crackled over the comms. Sentinel, we've got a problem. I've located the entrance to the underground lab. But, the containment wall's been breached. Infected are pouring into the town. My blood ran cold. The twelve-foot expandable metal wall had been our insurance policy, meant to keep the outbreak contained until we could complete our mission. With it breached, we were now in a race against time. Not just against the spread of the virus, but against the inevitable military response that would follow. Change of plans, I barked my mind racing through scenarios. 
Raptor hit these civilians to the extraction point. Aegis, you're with me. The rest of you, fan out and gather any research data you can find. We need to know exactly what we're dealing with before we torch this place. As the team split up, I led Aegis towards the hidden entrance Stiffer had located. The further we descended, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. The walls were lined with biohazard warnings and security checkpoints, each one a stark reminder of the dangers we were walking into. When we finally reached the main laboratory level, the scene that greeted us was like something out of a nightmare. Broken containment units lined the walls, their glass fronts shattered and contents spilled across the floor. In the center of the room, a group of what I could only describe as test subjects were huddled around a fallen scientist, tearing into his flesh with inhuman ferocity. I raised my hand, signaling Aegis to hold position. We needed to complete our mission, but taking on that many heavily infected subjects in close quarters would be suicide. As we watched in horror, one of the creatures raised its head, sniffing the air. Its eyes, far more alert than those of the infected we'd encountered above, locked onto our position. In that moment, as the creature let out an ear-piercing shriek that alerted its brethren, I realized our mission had just become infinitely more complicated. We weren't just dealing with mindless infected. These were something else entirely. The result of Umbral's twisted experiments taken to their logical, terrifying conclusion. As the horde of test subjects began to move towards us with frightening speed and coordination, I knew we were in for the fight of our lives. The underground laboratory, meant to be the source of our answers, had become a death trap. And somewhere in this maze of horrors lay the evidence we needed to destroy, the secrets that could bring down an empire, if we lived long enough to find them. The world narrowed to the barrel of my rifle as the first wave of test subjects rushed towards us. These weren't the shambling infected we'd encountered upstairs. They moved with terrifying speed and purpose. Fall back. I shouted to Aegis, laying down suppressing fire as we retreated into a narrow corridor. We sealed the emergency bulkhead behind us, buying precious seconds. The sound of fists pounding against metal echoed through the hallway as Aegis and I caught our breath. What the hell were those things, Sentinel? She asked her usually calm voice tinged with fear. I don't know, I admitted, but we need to find out and make sure none of this leaves this facility. I cave my calm. Cipher, what's your status on the data retrieval? His voice came back, strained and breathless. It's worse than we thought, boss. The Havoc virus. It's not just a weapon. They were trying to create super soldiers, enhancing strength, speed, aggression. But it went wrong. So wrong. A chill ran down my spine as the pieces fell into place. Those test subjects weren't just infected. They were the end result of Umbral's twisted ambitions. Keep digging, I ordered. Find everything you can on containment protocols and potential weaknesses. Jester, how are we looking on the demolition setup? Like Christmas morning in hell, Sentinel. Jester's voice crackled back, his usual levity absent. I've got enough boom juice to turn this place into a smoking crater. Just say the word. As if on cue, the bulkhead behind us groaned under the assault of the test objects. We didn't have much time. Tempest, Hawkeye. What's the situation topside? Hawkeye's response was grim. It's a war zone up here, Sentinel. The breach in the containment wall is getting wider. We've got infected pouring into town and I'm picking up chatter about military forces inbound. ETA 20 minutes, tops. The weight of command pressed down on me like a physical force. We had to complete our mission, destroy all evidence of Umbral's involvement. But at what cost? How many more innocent lives would be lost in the name of corporate secrecy? Aegis must have sensed my internal struggle. Sir, she said softly, those people up there, they don't stand a chance if this gets out. Whatever Umbral created here, it can't be allowed to spread. Her words crystallized my resolve. You're right. I nodded, then addressed the team. Listen up, Ares. New objective. We're going to salvage what we can, 
but our primary goal is now containment. Cipher, get me everything you can on a potential cure or vaccine. Jester, rig this place to blow, but be ready to trigger a localized detonation if we need to seal off sections. Tempest, Hawkeye, do what you can to funnel the infected away from populated areas. As the team acknowledged their orders, I turned to Aegis. We're going back in there. We need samples of whatever they were working on. It might be the key to stopping this if it spreads further. She nodded grimly, checking her weapon. Right behind you, Sentinel. We retraced our steps, this time prepared for what awaited us. The lad was a scene of carnage, blood-smeared equipment, and shattered containment units painting a grotesque picture of the final moments before everything went to hell. As we moved deeper into the facility, gathering what samples and data we could, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being washed. The test subjects we'd encountered earlier were nowhere to be seen, but their presence lingered like a shadow at the edge of our vision. It was Cipher who finally broke the tension. Sentinel, I found something. A hidden server room, heavily encrypted. Whatever's in there, Umbral wanted it buried deep. Can you crack it? I asked, already knowing the answer. Cipher could break into systems most people didn't even know existed, already on it, but, oh God. His voice faltered, a rarity for our usually unflappable tech expert. Sentinel, this goes way beyond Stonebridge. The Havoc virus, it's just the beginning. Umbral has plans for global deployment, stage outbreaks to destabilize regions, create demand for their cures. They're playing God, and we're all just pawns. The implications hit me like a physical blow. This wasn't just about covering up a lab accident. We were standing at ground zero of a potential global catastrophe. Download everything, I ordered, my mind racing. We're taking it all. As Cipher worked, a bone-chilling shriek echoed through the lab. The test subjects had found us. Jester, I barked into my comm. We need that localized detonation. Seal off the north wing now. The explosion rocked the facility, but it bought us the time we needed. As we raced through the crumbling corridors, samples and data in hand, I made a decision that would haunt me for years to come. Raptor, change of plans. Get our survivors to the clock tower. When the military arrives, make sure they find them. Sir, Raptor's voice was confused, questioning. We can't let this die with Stonebridge, I explained as we neared the exit. Someone needs to know the truth, to be ready if Umbral tries this again. We emerged into chaos. The containment wall had collapsed entirely, infected streaming into the town beyond. In the distance, I could hear the approaching thrum of military helicopters. Our window was closing fast. As we regrouped at our extraction point, I took one last look at Stonebridge College. In just a few hours, it had transformed from a peaceful campus to ground zero of a nightmare that threatened to engulf the world. The weight of what we'd discovered, of the choices we'd made, settled over us like a shroud. Jester, I said quietly, lighted up. As we boarded our stealth transport, the night sky bloomed with fire. Stonebridge College, and all the horrors it contained, vanished in a conflagration that would be visible for miles. But as we lifted off, each of us knew that this was far from over. We had stopped this outbreak, but the real war, against Umbral, against the forces that would unleash such terrors upon the world, was just beginning. In the cargo hold, surrounded by my team and the weight of our stolen secrets, I made a silent vow. We would expose the truth, whatever the cost. The Ares team had started this mission as Umbral's cleanup crew, we would end it as their worst nightmare. As our transport lifted off, the world below us descended into chaos. The infected had broken through the containment wall, spilling into the surrounding town like a virulent flood. From our vantage point, I could see the military forces arriving, their helicopters circling like vultures over a dying carcass. But I knew they were too late. The havoc virus had already taken hold, and Stonebridge was lost. Hawkeye, give me a sit rep, I ordered, my voice sounding hollow even to my own ears. His response came through the comms, tinted with a mix of professional detachment 
and underlying horror. It's a war zone down there, Sentinel. The infected are overrunning everything. Military's trying to establish a perimeter, but they're not equipped for this. They don't know what they're dealing with. I close my eyes, the weight of our actions pressing down on me like a physical force. We had completed our mission, destroyed the evidence linking Umbral to this catastrophe. But at what cost? The faces of those we left behind. The pregnant professor, the terrified student, flashed through my mind. Had we done the right thing, leaving them to be found by the military? Or had we just sentenced them to a fate worse than death? Aegis's voice broke through my brooding. Sir, we need to start processing these samples. If there's any hope of understanding this virus, of finding a way to stop it. I nodded, forcing myself back into the present. You're right. Cipher, what have you got from the data we extracted? Our tech expert's fingers danced over his tablet, his face illuminated by the glow of the screen. It's, it's worse than we thought, Sentinel. The Havoc virus isn't just a weapon. It's, it's adaptable, evolving. Each new strain they developed was more aggressive, more resilient than the last. And Umbral, they were planning staged outbreaks across the globe, creating demand for their cures while destabilizing entire regions. The implications hit me like a physical blow. This wasn't just about covering up a lab accident or protecting corporate secrets. We were standing on the precipice of a potential global catastrophe. Keep digging, I ordered. I want to know everything. Who authorized this, how far up the chain it goes, and most importantly, how we can stop it. As Cipher dove back into his work, I turned to the rest of the team. The toll of the mission was evident on their faces, the haunted look in Tempest's eyes, the grim set of Raptor's jaw, the tremble in Jester's usually steady hands as he cleaned his weapon. I know what we just went through was hell. I began, struggling to find the right words. We've seen things tonight that no one should ever have to see. Dumb things that will haunt us for the rest of our lives. But what we discovered in that lab, it goes beyond Stonebridge. Beyond Umbral, this is bigger than any of us. Raptor spoke up, his voice uncharacteristically subdued. What are you saying, boss? We completed the mission. Evidence destroyed, loose ends tied up. Isn't that what we do? I shook my head, the full weight of our situation settling over me. Not this time. What we found in that lab, what Cipher's uncovering now. We can't let this die with Stonebridge. If we do, we're just as complicit as Umbral in whatever comes next. The tension in the transport was palpable as my words sank in. We had always operated in the shadows, cleaning up messes and keeping secrets. What I was proposing was a fundamental shift in everything we stood for. So what's the play? Jester asked, a hint of his usual mischief creeping back into his voice. We going rogue. Take on the big bad corporation. Save the world. Despite the gravity of the situation, I couldn't help but crack a smile. Something like that. But we do this smart. We use the evidence we've gathered, the samples we've collected. We find allies, people we can trust. And we expose Umbral for what they really are. As I laid out the beginnings of a plan, I could see the spark of determination igniting in my team's eyes. We had started this mission as Umbral's cleanup crew their silent undertakers. We would end it as their worst nightmare. The next few hours passed in a blur of activity. Aegis worked tirelessly to analyze the virus samples, searching for weaknesses we could exploit. Cipher delved deeper into the stolen data, unraveling the complex web of Umbral's plans and identifying potential allies and targets. The rest of us prepared for the long fight ahead, knowing that from this moment on, we were marked men and women. As we approached our safe house, a nondescript warehouse on the outskirts of the city far from Stonebridge, I allowed myself a moment of reflection. The world we had known was changing, perhaps irrevocably. The Havoc virus was out there now, and with it, the potential for devastation on a scale we could scarcely imagine. But as I looked at my team, battered, exhausted, but unbowed, I felt a glimmer of hope. 
We had seen the face of true evil in those underground labs, witnessed the depths of human cruelty and ambition. But we had also seen courage, sacrifice, and the unbreakable bonds forged in the heat of battle. As we touched down, I made a silent vow. We would expose the truth, whatever the cost. We would hold Umbral accountable for their actions, and we would do everything in our power to stop the spread of the Havoc virus. The road ahead would be long and fraught with danger, but we would face it together. The Ares team had been forged in the Crucible of Stonebridge, and we had emerged stronger, more determined than ever. As we stepped out into the pre-dawn light, I knew that this was just the beginning. The real war, against Umbral, against the forces that would unleash such terrors upon the world, was just beginning, and we would be ready.